now let's take a look at chapter 10, Simplifying Radicals. When we're having to work with radicals, it might be helpful to have, for us to have a list of perfect squares, such as 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, and 10 squared is 100. And what we're going to try to do is identify perfect squares that will divide into 54. And I think that we're going to be best off using 9 and 6, 9 times 6. So let's write this as the square root of 9 times 6. And we can then separate it and make the square root of 9 times the square root of 6. The square root of 9 has a whole number value, 3 but the square root of 6 does not. So there's our result, 3 radical 6. Number 53. It would be very tempting to simply add the radicands 20 and 25. Very tempting to do that. But radicals, as I say in my book, are not compatible with addition, which means we can't add them directly. Instead, we have to treat them as if they are like terms and make sure that the radicals are exactly the same before we can add them together. So to add these radicals, to combine them, we must first see if we can simplify the square roots that we have, the square root of 20 and the square root of 45. And 20 has a perfect square of 4 times 5. Similarly, 45 is 9 times 5. And I've chosen, of course, 4 and 9 because those are perfect squares. The 2 that we already have out in front is unaffected by this. It will be patient and wait. And we've got 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 plus the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. And simplifying that, that's 2 times 2 times the square root of 5 plus 3 times the square root of 5 and Ultimately, that's 4 radical 5 plus 3 radical 5. Oh, and now we can add them because they are like terms. And make that 4 and 3 is 7 radical 5. Number 54 says rationalize the denominator and simplify. 10 over the square root of 5 can be multiplied by square root of 5 over itself. And the reason we want to do that, of course, is to create a perfect square in the denominator, the square root of 25. The numerator doesn't simplify at all. It's just 10 times square root of 5, just as we see it. But that denominator now can be written as the whole number 5. And that's our purpose of rationalizing the denominator. The numerator is still 10 square root of 5. And the whole numbers can simplify. We can divide out 5 here and are left with 1. And 5 into 10, we get 2. The end result here is that we get 2 square root of 5. For number 55, it's done very similarly. Square root of 3 over square root of 6. We will multiply this fraction by square root of 6 over square root of 6. So we can create a perfect square in the denominator, square root of 36. The numerator, these are both radicals, and they can combine to become the square root of 18. And the square root of 36 is the whole number 6, and that's what the purpose of rationalizing the denominator is. But the square root of 18 can be simplified, though not completely. It can be simplified by recognizing that 18 is 9 times 2. So that square root of 9 times square root of 2 in the numerator over 6 becomes 3 times the square root of 2 over 6. And then 3 and 6 can divide out a little bit. 3 into 3 is once, and into 6 is twice. Our final result here is square root of 2 over 
2. And that cannot be simplified any further. And our very last exercise for this practice final exam, number 56, says multiply and simplify. This is where we must actually multiply as if these are binomials. We could use the FOIL method if that's helpful to think of. So we can distribute square root of 2 to each term on the second binomial and then positive 1 will get distributed. So let's see what it is that we get here. Square root of 2 times square root of 2, they're both square roots, we get square root of 4. Square root of 2 times negative 3 is negative 3 square root of 2. We cannot combine them any further than that. Multiplying 1 times square root of 2 is a positive 1 square root of 2. And 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. These middle two terms are like terms and they can be combined. At the same time, the square root of 4 is 2 all by itself. So that becomes 2. These two middle terms, negative 3 radical 2 plus 1 radical 2 is minus 2 radical 2. And then minus 3. And now the integers 2 and negative 3 can combine to give us negative 1 minus 2 radical 2. And that's it. We have had a chance to look at the entire practice test. I hope this has been helpful to you and I wish you well on your final exam.